Welcome to Rational Applications. You can see that I've adjusted our notes because now I have this category here that says formulas. So all I'm going to do is jot down some formulas that are going to be super, super helpful throughout these notes. So one of them that we're going to first talk about is this one. Work done equals rate times time. On this first one, you can see I'm doing something such as painting a fence. That's a job. And Johnny and Nahum are going to work together because they want some extra cash for some shenanigans. So the rate that Johnny can do this if he works alone is one fence in eight hours. All right, let's see about Nahum. Looks like Nahum can do it much faster in four hours. So I'm going to have one fence in four hours. So the time that it takes, and they're doing the work together should be the same amount of time. So the work done is going to be the rate times the time. So I'm going to have T all over eight, and then I'm going to have T all over four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine their work together because now I'm curious how long it takes them both to paint the one I just need to make sure I give some common denominators here. So I see an eight, which is great because I'm just going to multiply top and bottom by two. And the one, how can I make that look a little bit friendlier? Now I can go ahead and combine all my fractions and focus on the numerator. So this is where we clear the fraction. If you don't like the phrase clear the fraction. You can also think of it like this. I can multiply everything by eight, both sides, and that would clear all of those denominators. Or you can just focus on the numerator, which is 3t equals eight, divide both sides by three, which is going to give us a final answer of 2.67 hours. And that's for both of them together. So you can see their times are the same because they're working together. So let's try another work problem. This one is going to deal with stuffing envelopes for a fundraiser for Desperados because 5,000 envelopes is a bit intense. So let's see if Bucky and Alyssa can work together. So you can see I've created another table to help me organize. So I'm going to have Bucky and I'm going to have Alyssa. So, oh, interesting. So we already know that Bucky can stuff envelopes three times as fast as Alyssa. And it looks like they're working with 5,000 envelopes. I do know that if they work together, they can do the job in four hours. So luckily, this one's a little different because I have the time. Their time is four hours for both of them. So it's the same time because they're going to work together. I'm curious what happens if they work alone, which is a bit backwards. So here's the nice thing. I know that Bucky is 5,000 envelopes, that one job, 5,000, all over some kind of time. I don't know how long it takes Bucky, but I know with Alyssa, oh man, it's going to take Alyssa three times as long as Bucky. So now create my work done equation. So I'm going to multiply four times 5,000. So there's 20,000 all over T. Basically, Alyssa's a lot slower. Think of it that way. Alyssa's three times as slow is another great way to think about it. And I know if the work that they do together should be 5,000 envelopes, they're going to share those envelopes. So if I add their work together, I'm going to get 5,000. Now I can focus on common denominators. I see a 3t, so I'm just going to multiply the top and the bottom by a 3. And that's going to simplify to something like this. You can see that I changed the 5,000 to make it over 1 because it makes it look a little nicer when I've got fraction, fraction, fraction. Now what I'm going to do is add my numerators because I've got the common denominator. So it looks something like this. And that looks pretty friendly because since I've got fraction is equal to a fraction, I'm just going to do a little cross multiplication. So I did 1 times 80,000 equals 3t times 5,000. And luckily, I can just 
divide both sides and get the final times. So for Bucky, if he works alone, it's going to take basically five and a third hour. And Alyssa, if she works alone, it's going to take her 16 hours. Alyssa is three times as slow. That as fast is definitely the tricky part of this one. All right, example three, Grady is loving to jog. This one is gonna introduce a different formula because now we're working with rates and times and distances. Distance equals rate times time. And this we've already seen, but it's a good kind of clue to jot it down. So let's say I'm going 40 miles per hour and I'm gonna go for two hours. Well, that would mean I went 80 miles. So that's kind of how that formula works and why that formula works. So we're going to go uphill and we're going to go downhill. So it says Grady can jog five miles downhill. In the same time, he can jog three miles uphill. Let's look at the rate. So it says he jogs downhill four miles per hour faster. Find the jogging rate. So I don't know how fast Grady is going, but I know he's going faster downhill. So here's the rate, four miles per hour faster. So plus four. So I know that distance equals rate times time. So I'm just going to divide both sides by R. So time distance divided by the rate. So I can simply do three divided by R and five divided by R plus four. Luckily, it says that he can do these in the same time. So all I have to do is set these times equal to one another. And what I like to do is add a few parentheses to help you group things because now when you try to cross multiply, it's gonna be three times this whole piece equals five R. Go ahead and distribute that three. And then I can subtract the three R. And luckily I can see that Grady went six miles uphill and downhill went 10 miles per hour, which kind of makes sense. He's going downhill, he should be able to go faster. Let's take a closer look at example four. So we're looking at a canoe. Now these questions can be a little tricky because right now it's telling me that I'm going eight miles per hour in still water. So that's how fast I'm going. It says I'm traveling 12 miles up the Colorado River and most likely and back. And it says that the entire trip takes three and a half hours. So let's fill in my table. So I'm going 12 miles upstream, 12 miles downstream. I'm going in my canoe eight miles per hour, most likely up and down. Now here's what's interesting. It wants to know what the speed of the current is because most likely if I'm traveling in my canoe, aren't I adorable, and I'm going upstream, most likely I'm paddling against this current. It's gonna slow me down. It's gonna take away from my speed. So there's where I'm gonna minus the speed of the current because I'm paddling against it. So I'm gonna go a little slower. But luckily when I am traveling back down stream, it's actually gonna go with the current and that is going to speed me up. So it's gonna go slower one way, but faster the other way. So to get to my time, I'm simply gonna do distance divided by the rate. So eight minus C is going upstream, distance divided by the rate. So 12, eight plus C going the other way. And it says that the total trip took three and a half hours. So time plus time gives me time. Oh man, neither of those are common denominators. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of trading. So this first one looks like it's missing the plus C. So I'm gonna give the first fraction eight plus C on top and on bottom. And then this one is missing a minus C. So I'm gonna do that on top and on bottom. So I can start to see the common denominator filling in. And that is missing both pieces. So I'm gonna have to give the top 
and the bottom that common denominator. Common denominators look good, so now I'm going to focus on the top. And you can see I went ahead and tried to distribute. So here's 12 times 8, 12 times C, another 12 times 8, 12 times minus C, and I went ahead and multiplied these pieces together. So there's the 64 minus C squared. It's almost like your difference of squares. It's just kind of going the other way. Here's the good news. These 12 C's completely cancel out. So now I'm just left with something that looks like this. All right, now I got to solve for C. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2 to 24 from both sides. I'm going to go ahead and divide by negative 3 and a half. And then just be sure you just square root both sides. So I'm going to square root and square root. So the current is moving around 3.02 miles per hour. So you can see I wrote a final sentence to kind of put it all back in context. All right, Jake is going to go visit his sister Alex. How sweet. And it looks like Jake is driving 150 miles at a speed of unknown. And then it says he's going to increase his speed by 10 miles per hour for the next 300 miles. The entire total trip took him eight hours. We want to know how fast he was going on each part of the trip. One way he's going 150 miles at a speed of X. And then it says the next 300 miles, he's going to increase his speed same thing, distance divided by the rate. And I know the entire trip or the total trip took eight hours. So I'm just going to add my time plus time equals eight. So time, time, and time. Definitely missing some common denominators here. So the first piece, I'm going to give that an x plus 10. And the second piece, I'm going to give that an x on top and bottom. So you can see where I'm trading those denominators to make sure that they now match. And again, the eight is missing both pieces on top and on bottom. If you want to make it over one, that might help you see it a bit better. I always like doing that. Common denominators are all good. So I'm going to clear the fraction and focus just on the numerators. So I'm going to distribute the 150 plus 300, nothing to distribute. And then I'm also going to distribute the 8x. All right, so now I'm just going to swing everything over to one side. And oh, that's going to take me a while to factor. I'd have to think of something that multiplies to 8 times 1,500 and adds to negative 370. That's ridiculous. So let's pull over on the side of the road, pun intended, and you're going to see our lovely quadratic formula. Yes, it is there to the rescue. This is a game changer for Algebra 2 because now we don't have to sit here all the time and try to think of numbers that would multiply and hoping that it factors because not everything factors. The hard thing is when you plug into your calculator, you have a plus and a minus. You have two possibilities. And that's kind of what my calculator shows. Two possibilities. Here's the problem. One of them says I'm going 50 miles an hour and the other says I'm going negative miles per hour. No, we don't go back in time unless we're in a DeLorean. So Jake, you are going 50 miles per hour on that first 150 miles. And then on that last 300, you can see he increased the speed by 10. So there's 60 miles an hour for the last 300 miles. All right, last one is dealing with Mr. and Coach Anue trying to make some soccer goals. So we can see that Coach Anue has made six goals on his last 30 attempts. Ooh, only giving him a 20% chance of making a goal. Well, let's see if he can practice because now he's going to make a goal every time in his next however many attempts. I don't know, but I want to know how many attempts Coach Inoue would need if he wants to go from a 20% up to a 40%. So let's build a quick little fraction to see if we can organize this because I've got six goals out of 30 attempts and I want to get all the way up to 40%. Well, this is a fraction, so I need to rewrite 40% as a fraction. So that's going to be 40 out of 
100. And it says that I'm going to make a goal every single attempt. So here's the number of goals that I'm making, and here's the total number of shots that I'm taking. So I'm going to increase. They say X. I'm going to use A for attempts. I think A makes more sense for the context of the problem. Here's the thing. If I make these goals, that's fantastic, but that's also going to increase the total by that many attempts. Also, they're both going to increase because if I make five goals, well, that's going to increase my total by five goals as well. You'll see that I went ahead and did some parentheses again to guide my work. So here's my cross multiplication. Go ahead and distribute the 100 and distribute the 40 into both. I always like to draw arrows. It helps me make sure that I distributed everything that I needed to. I can swing everything over. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 40. I'm going to subtract 600. And then I'm going to divide by 60, which is going to give me 10 goals in a row is what Mr. or Coach Anue is going to need if he wants to raise up to a 40%.